Hey everyone, Spazzy Dragon here, aka Syndromes, and welcome to part 5. Yes, we're almost there, guys. Yes, we are almost there. So, we found our embark site, and we can embark. Let's just quickly. Okay, small reminder the only reason I have this on the screen right now is sh to show you what I would usually do on my keyboard. This is not how you play the game. You play the game with the regular keyboard. You do not need the on screen keyboard for this, just in case, right? And all that th there is to do right now is press E for embark, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Boosh! Oh, I actually need to, sorry, there we go. You have selected an area with salt water. It's this over here. It might be very difficult to survive here. You've selected a civilization that is dead or dying. Your dwarves might assume important positions. This is something that I really hoped I would not encounter on a tutorial video. Remember when I said the smaller your world is, the bigger the chance that the civilization you are trying to play might be dying? This is what I said. But it's okay. Let's go anyway, just for the sake of the tutorial. Okay, so in the second episode, I mentioned that there are many presets of how you can start the you know, game itself. So these are the presets. But we are actually going to prepare carefully just so I can s show you how the preparation itself works. If you're lazy and you already had it up to this, you can actually skip this episode and choose one of the, you know, either play now. Uh, you probably might as well just use play now. If you want, you can skip this uh, episode altogether. I do, however, suggest you watch it all the same. So for those who are with us right now, let's continue with the prepare for the journey cave, uh, carefully. Now here is the moment. Um, pom, 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 pom. We start with seven dwarves. The game randomly generates the name and it also shows you what exactly it has. Right. So these are dwarves. We have Dayton Kaganos, we have Autumn Itanet, for example, so we start off with seven dwarves every single time. What we also have down here is 400 points. Now these are embark points. You can spend them on items, on skills, and on other sorts of stuff. Now what skills are? Every dwarf can basically do anything in the game. You can simply tell him, hey, you're gonna be a woodcutter now. Right? And the guy's gonna say, oh, okay, I'm gonna be a woodcutter now. Now, the only thing is that every single talent a dwarf has, has its own level. And if you place someone who has no idea what they're doing, they're going to be really bad at it until they learn how to, until they gain enough experience, until they learn how to do it. So, this is why when you first embark, you have a chance to embark with people who actually are competent in their skills, and this is where these skill points are. You can distribute 10 skill points for every single of the 7 dwarfs you start off with. It's going to take from the points. The more skills you assign, the less points you will have, and the less stuff you can take. We're going to talk about items. You can actually switch between the dwarfs and the items you can take with you uh, by pressing tab. But right now we're going to start off with the dwarfs. So, for example, I want a dwarf who will be good at digging, because Dwarf Fortress involves a lot of digging. So, first of all, we are going to... Right now we're navigating the dwarves themselves, right? In order to select which skill you want to make better, we're going to move to the right, and then use the plus and the minus to change this. For example, right now he's not a miner. I'm going to play, uh, press plus once and make him into a novice miner. This is also going to consume one point uh, from the available points you can assign to a dwarf, and at the same time, over down here, it's going to take up whole p five points from the overall one. So, obviously, I can actually spend all of these points by maxing everything out, right? You can only get up to a proficient miner, to a 10, to a level 10, right? Now, what this means is that uh, the, it, he's going to be a professional, uh, he's going to be a proficient miner, but he can still learn to be a much better one, right? You can max out. You cannot max out a dwarf like this. 
So we're going to leave the, him as a proficient miner. And actually, I want three miners. So I'm going to go back to the dwarfs by pressing to the left, go to the next dwarf, and repeat the same thing. I'm going to make him into a proficient miner. Now we have two miners. Now we're going to go back and select the next one and also make it a miner because I like three miners because things get done a lot faster. So obviously we're not going to survive only on miners so we're going to go back, select the next dwarf and uh, we will need someone who knows how to cut wood and how to make things out of that wood. So this time we're not going to use the miner we're going to click down a little bit and we're going to go for the woodcutter. So here we're going to set maybe seven-ish. I found myself that, you know, it doesn't matter how fast. You can actually put into uh, put in a one, so he's just a woodcutter, a novice one, and then put the rest of it into being a good carpenter. So a carpenter is a dwarf who does stuff out of wood, so he can make beds, he can make tools, he can make figurines and, well, sorry, not, not figurines, sorry, um, uh, tools out of, uh, you know, he can make stuff out of uh, <clears throat> wood. And, yeah. Next, wood being one thing uh, you can build out of, then there's stone. So, we're gonna go back to the dwarves, we're gonna select the next one, and we're gonna make sure that he is a good mason. A, a mason is a dwarf who works with stone. So, He's going to be a proficient mason. And after this, we have two dwarfs left. These guys, for us, are going to help us sustain the, the fortress itself. They're going to make food for us. So, we're going to go down for him to be a grower. And we're going to make sure that he's, an ad uh, he's going to be a proficient grower. We're going to go back to the next and the last work and do the same. So we have two farmers who are going to be, you know, sustaining the uh, fortress itself. Another thing we need is drinks. So that's why we're going to place the last dwarf to be a brewer. Like this. And after this, we are going to select the other farmer to be a cook. So as you can see, we, are, we actually spent a lot of points doing all of this. You can actually start off with all of these people having no skills whatsoever and assign them to different jobs. The only problem is that they will be crap at it. So for example, the farmers would be really slow to grow food, uh, the mason would be making uh, stuff really slowly and the quality of the goods wouldn't be good. Uh, we're going to talk about quality a little bit later, and so on and so forth. Now, there is one more uh, profession that we need to assign for later use. So, we're going to go back to the dwarves. We're going to select any dwarf that still has some points to left to be distributed. And this time we're going to go all the way up. And we're going to pick the appraiser. Now, there is trade in the game, and you need an appraiser to calculate the worth of your produced goods. All you need is one. That's it. That leads us with 75 points. So what we're going to do now, we are going to press tab and switch to the items. As you can see, we've prepared everything we need over here. So we have seven dwarfs, three of them miners, one of them is going to be working with wood, one of them is going to be working with stone, and two of them are going to be our cook, our brewer, and farmer. Time to go to the items. They're gonna go here. On the left, you have all the stuff you currently have with us, and actually we have a lot of stuff that we don't need. That is going to take up a lot of stuff. So, for example, we don't need a stepladder. You can change the amount of stuff you bring with you by pressing plus and minus again. So, we don't want a stepladder. There's only one of them. As you can see, we have three crutches over here. It says three. It means that we have three crutches. So, we have only one because there is no number after this. We don't want this. So, we're going to select it and press minus. It's going to remove us, uh, remove the stuff from here, and it's going to give us points back. We don't need a wheelbarrow, we can make them one on our own. 
Crutches are for injured dwarfs, so is for splints. A bu bucket is always something you need. We don't have any dwarfs who use crossbows or, um, you know, bo uh, bows, so we don't need the quivers. It, they're currently taking up, there are three of them, uh, each of them are taking 10 points, so that's 30 points back. Ropes are good, bags are good, cloth is good. Plump helmets are a type of food. They're basically mushrooms. Each of them are four points, so they're actually taking a lot, but that's food. We need food. Until we can get a farm of our own up, we're going to be eating this. Uh, cave lobster, also food. Prepared uh, intestines, 15 of them, also food. Spawns. Dimple cup spawn. A spawn is basically seeds. Uh, for regular fruits and uh, vegetables, you get seeds. For uh, mushrooms, you get spawns. It's basically the same thing. So we have five spawns of that, but we're going to, we're not going to use dimple cups because uh, you cannot grow them all the time. Rock nuts is uh, also something to uh, plant, although it's basically topside. Sweet pod seeds, again, it's a uh, type of seed that we're not going to grow for now. We can get some points back from here. Cave wheat, also something we can grow, but we don't need right now. Pigtails, uh, something you can grow for making um, clothes out of, so we don't need that for now. Plump helmets, so plump helmets are actually the main source that we're going to use for now, because this is the type of fungi that you can grow all year round. So this is where our points are going to go in. Let's take 30 of these. We're not going to run out. Then you have rum. You have a lot of rum. Dwarves survive on alcohol. The only time when they uh, drink water is when they're injured. So every time a dwarf drinks, and dwarf drinks more, uh, uh, dwarfs drink more than they eat. So you always need to have more, um, you know, more drinks than you need food. So you have both rum and ale. Because they like variety. They're actually going to complain if they don't have enough ver ver varied type of goods, right? We're going to also go with an anvil, because an anvil is needed to then create metal, metal goods later on. Although it does take up 100 points. You can actually remove it if you want, but that's not the case. Um, copper battle axes are used as weapons, but they're also used to chop down trees. Now, as you remember, over here... We only have one person who's actually using, um, you know, who's who's used to wood, wood crafting and chopping down trees. So we don't actually need two of these axes. So we're going to take one back, and we're going to get back 68 points. See, we already have two, 268 points back just by going through this list and moving, like, we're removing all the unneeded stuff right now. But, as you can see, we only have two copper picks, and as you remember, we actually have three miners, so we're going to add one of these. Now then, here comes the fun part. This section is for animals. This section is for physical items. So we're going to move over here, and we can see all the things we have. You have uh, bulls, you have cows, you have cats, uh, dogs, donkeys, eat lambs, piglets, boars, Every single animal has its own uses. You can breed them for meat, you can breed them for leather, uh, you can breed them for war training, and that is exactly what we're going to do. We are going to embark with a few dogs. See, these are female dogs, as you can see over here. We're going to have eight female dogs, and in order to make sure that these dogs breed, we are going to take two males with us, two male dogs, and that brings us down to 64 points. These things are actually very expensive. After that, we need a cat. The reason why we need a cat is because cats catch wormen, and the place where we're going to embark, at some point our, our fortress itself is going to end up with wormen. So we will need a cat to actually catch them. Boom. Now we have uh, 53 points, we can, um, we can place these points into something we already have. If you want 
to actually look at things. I'm not going to actually see it. You can press N and uh, you can select from many types of stuff that you can bring along. So for example, you have uh, meat, you have fish, you have eggs, garden vegetables. So you have you can bring more seeds with you. You can bring other types of drinks with you. You can bring actually weapons with you if you want. Although weapons really do take up a lot of um, you know points. Stone, cut gems, and you can basically take whatever the hell you want with you. There's a lot of things to take. I suppose the one thing that I want to take with me right now is coke, because this is where we're going to get uh, fuel for our furnaces from. So we're going to select this, we want to take this, and it is going to be added to the bottom. And just like we removed stuff from this list and added another pick, we're going to select it and make sure that we spend the last of our points by bringing more coke with us. That leaves us with three points. Let's just find something that is with one point. That's the spawns. And use up all of our points. Alright guys, so we are finally ready to play the game. Right? Good for you. Right. So, in the next episode, we are finally going to start to play the game. Anyway, this is Spazzy Dragon. I'll see you on the Embark site.